Hello students, this is the Concord Consortium Flood Module, Activity 4, Page 6, so this is Part 2 of Activity 4, Unintended Consequences. From 1994 to 2007, the town of Valley Park, Missouri built a three-mile-long levee in their town to protect against flooding of the Merrimack River, which runs right along the town. So here's Valley Park, here's the levee they built, Here's the Merrimack River, kind of makes a big corner, and here's the town of Fenton. The levee and structure area can be seen in the picture to the right. The red lines show the levee. So examine the map. What areas do you think the levees shown in, in red was built to protect? So here's the levee. Here's the town of Valley Park. You can probably make a good guess. The levee worked well for the town of Valley Park, Missouri. They're down down to area has experienced no inundation that's water in the town since the levee was completed into 2007 however it's not true for much of the surrounding area the town of fenton missouri which is right here downstream of valley park experienced an extreme flood in the spring of 2017. many residents at residents of fenton blame the levee in valley park for causing their flooding to be worse than in past events Below is a graphic of the flood extent from the 2017 flood. So the water is coming down here. Here's the direction of stream flow. <clears throat> it flows by Valley Park. It can't get into Valley Park, so it has to go somewhere else. All the water that would normally cover Valley Park gets pushed down the river. Now, whether that goes, that causes additional flooding downstream or not is difficult to model but um, it could certainly be a concern of the citizens in Fenton um, that Valley Park, all this water has to go somewhere else and maybe ends up in their town. How might the levees around Valley Park have made impacts on flooding worse for Fenton? So the water that's not going into Valley Park has to go somewhere. So you can take that and write your answer to question 19. That somewhere might be downstream into Fenton, where the water levels might be a bit higher. If you lived in Fenton, where would you place levees to protect your town? Let's take a snapshot. This may or may not work on iPad. I've heard both, try Safari. And here's Fenton. Here's the river. So if we're trying to protect Fenton, what would make the most sense for Fenton, here I'll make Fenton's levee purple, just to distinguish it from Valley Park, you'd probably need to have a levee next to the river here. You might even have to go around the corner here to prevent water from getting behind the levee and then maybe you'd have to go down a little bit more. You can make up your own answer, feel free to draw a different levy as long as you can justify where you would put your levy for Fenton. So let's go to page seven here. Can we protect everyone? Levees are critical to protect areas that should not be flooded, mainly centers of high population and infrastructure that's hard to replace. However, as we saw on the previous page, levees can make flooding worse in other areas that are not behind the levee. Levees can, can be built on either side or both sides of the river. The placement of the levees depends on both the topography of the area and the resources to protect. On this page, you'll use Flood Explorer to investigate how the placement of levees affects the hot level of risk flood damage to communities on both sides of the river. So run several experiments for a long, heavy rainstorm with medium starting level water. Place levees around the river to minimize flood damage risks. Well, first of all, I like to run um, just kind of a, a baseline here so we can see what happens if we don't do anything. So let's look at flooding if we don't do any levees. And this is heavy rainfall, storm duration long, and starting water level medium. 
So not much floods when it's starting level medium. The retirement village looks like it got a bit wet. Bend Elementary looks like it got wet, if not, or it's close to areas that are wet. The hospital's okay. Ben Fields got inundated, but that's probably okay because it's probably just a baseball field and nothing much was damaged. Um, parts of Silver City, the airport looks a little bit flooded. Parts of Silver City are flooded. So gauge one is installed on the river between Waterworks Park and Retirement Village. Where should the levees be built? So let's go look at gauge one. So if we're, look, if we're looking to build an, a levee around gauge one, should we put it on this side of the river where it's mainly forest and undeveloped land? Or should we put it on this side of the river, which would be the east side of the river according to the map, where it looks like retirement village is getting inundated and um, some of the um, older folks are getting wet which is probably hard for them to evacuate. It's harder for them to clean up and um, start over. So let's decide that we're gonna protect the retirement village here. Let's click on levees. And we can run it again. We can hit the restart button here. Now we have a levee on one side of the river. And it's gonna start to rain. We're gonna see the river rise. Hopefully it won't rise above this levee. Looks okay. These got, the retirement village looks dry this time. So we've done our experiment for the retirement village. Um, add levees to the locations you chose in the prior question, run the model, take a snapshot of gauge one when the water is at its highest level. So at this point we can take a snapshot of what we did right here, um, except we need to back up to when the water was at its highest level. Go back just a little bit. Okay, so we can see the water went up to the levee, didn't go over, kept the retirement village dry. Let's take a picture of this. I'm gonna circle just so it's clear to all of you that the levee went on this side of the river here. It's right there. It's a little bit hard to see but um, it went on the east side of the river where the houses were. The undeveloped side on the other side did flood, but it's okay, it's trees, it's a park, or it's something where there aren't a lot of buildings. So now we have our snapshot. We can move on to question 23. Explain how the levees you built change the risk of flood damage on both sides of the river. Well, in this particular case, there's undeveloped land on the west side. So we put the levee on the east side. There are buildings and people on the east side. This is basically kind of like a word bank or some ideas, some phrases that you might want to include in your answer. Um, the west side, it is less developed. No buildings on the west side. Is it okay if the west side floods? There's no buildings, it's maybe a park, a forest. Um, it's something where buildings and people are not going to be impacted. How certain are you that the levees minifies risks of flood damage in the area? Well, it looks pretty dry over here. The water table maybe is a little bit high, but the houses are not covered with water. So I'm gonna say I'm pretty certain. You can decide what you wanna say. Um, 
we can, there's a lot of uncertainty around levees in general. I'm fairly certain about this particular model that we ran on this particular case where we had, you know, we, we had this level of rainfall, we had heavy rainfall, long duration, was starting water level medium. What's uncertain is what would happen if the starting water level was high or we had more rain or we had rain for a very, very long duration or the levee had to hold back the water for weeks instead of just days. Because the length of this storm was pretty short. We'll let it run here so you can see how many days. Um, if we're building earthen levees here, earthen levees are great if the duration is short, but earthen levees will absorb water and kind of turn into mud, which uh, wet mud doesn't hold water back very well. So it would depend on the starting water level. So my, cert my certainty level depends on the starting water level, the length of rain, or we'll call it the length of the storm, the length of the flooding, um, how saturated the levees get, levees become, which depends on how long they're having to hold back the water. If they have to hold back the water a long time, they're going to become saturated with water, basically turn into mud and not hold water very well. And that's when levees start to fail. We also know if the starting water level is high, the water might go over the levees. In this case, we have a medium, in our model, we ran a medium starting water level. But if the starting water level was high, where we had a case like this, and only a little bit of rain was needed to um, get the river to flood and maybe even go over the levee, then um, it's a more uncertain prospect for the retirement village whether they're going to stay dry. All right, that's question 25 of activity four in uh, the flood module. We'll do activity five next. I'll see you in the next video. This is Dr. B signing off on activity four.